Hey, if you're new here, my name is Danny Christine. I am a multi-site childcare business owner here in Long Island, New York with three childcare center locations currently open and two more on the way that are presently in development. Over the years, while I have been operating my childcare business, I have been helping other childcare providers like you across the United States with starting up their programs and managing their childcare business operations. And another fun fact about me is that this week I just turned 30. No, but in all seriousness, I am so excited to be stepping into this new decade. And as I've been thinking about it and reflecting on it, I just find it so surreal, honestly, because it feels like just yesterday that I was 20 years old starting my first childcare program as a group family daycare provider in my home back in Queens. That was the summer of 2014. So I was just shy of my 21st birthday and um, just starting out as this like eager, excited, nervous and naive <laughs> childcare provider. And I can't believe that here we are today with, honestly, you know what would be a fun task that I should probably already have the number for, but I don't, is figuring out how many children over these last nine years, how many kids have been enrolled in my programs over the years. I'm pretty, I would, I feel so co confident in saying it's been nearly a thousand, if not over that, between my uh, three centers and the two home daycares I had. I don't know, but currently we got, <laughs> we've got a capacity of nearly 200 kids across the three locations. And it just, it blows my mind how quickly time flies and we get from point A to, point Z. <laughs> um, but at the same time, it does feel like so much has been done in such a little amount of time. And I'm often asked, how do I manage? Whenever I tell, I just got these birthday braids done last week. And when I, when I was in the salon, multiple people came up to me because I'm, I always have my laptop and I'm always working, especially when my hands are free and I'm stuck. So, you know, getting your braids done is an all day event. So I always ask for the Wi-Fi and I get to work. So people were coming up to me asking like, oh, do you work from home? What do you do? And when I say I own a daycare, own, I own multiple daycares, they are shocked. And then they, if they've ever had an interest in it, usually ask me a lot of questions. So those questions, honestly, from my hair, uh, braider <laughs> inspired me to make this video. So in honor of my 30th birthday, we're going to go through 30 things that are really important for you to know, no matter what phase of your childcare business journey you're in, no matter what modality you are, no matter how big or how small your program is, or how long you've been in the game, or if you're not even in it at all yet, this video will be useful to you. I promise. Now that you know a little bit more about me, I'd love to learn a little about you. Be sure to subscribe to this channel if you're not already subscribed. If you scroll down or look on your screen somewhere, you might see a, a button that says subscribe. Click it, please. It does me a lot of favors and it does you a favor because I will begin to show up in your subscription feed. Whenever I post a new video, you check your feed and I'm there. If you want to take it a step further, you can also click that notification bell so that you can be notified, literally get an email or a message on your YouTube app anytime I upload a video. And as soon as you hear something you like, please be sure to hit that thumbs up button to let me know. So let's go ahead and get into it. Starting off with number 30, study the regulations. Study the regs. You gotta know the rules. Wherever you are, even if you're not in the United States, there is probably some sort of governing body or regulatory agency that oversees your child care practices within your territory, whatever it's called. If it's your state or your city, in New York, we have two regulatory agencies, if I'm not mistaken. We have one for the New York City Five Boroughs, that's the Department of Health, and we have one for the rest of New York State. Why? I don't know. Are the regulations different? Yes, slightly. I don't know why either, but if you're in the city of the five boroughs of New York City, you got uh, to go to the Department of Health. 
If you are in New York State, you got to go to New York State Office of Children and Family Services. If you are in any other state within the United States of America, you have to check your local child care resource and referral agencies or just simply do your Googles. Figure out who your regulatory agency is, your licensing agency. Find out what those regulations are. Most likely it's going to be a couple dozen pages a couple hundred pages in some areas and it's fine it, it's the those rules are there for a reason i have heard that policies and regulations are put into place because things have happened over the years in other child care programs and that's usually how new regulations come into play you need to know what they are so find them study them and keep Keep them in an easily accessible area so that you can constantly be looking at them. If you're just starting out, I would recommend that you read through them in full before you even submit your licensing application or before you even sign a lease for a center location or a home, whatever the case may be. Just, just study your regulations. I'm going to try not to go into so much depth on all 30 of these tips because there's just so much to get through, but you get the gist. Find your regs, study them. If you don't know how to get them, leave a comment below or you can book me for a consultation and I can help you find them. Number 29, choose a modality. You might have heard me use the word modality a couple minutes ago in the introduction of this video. A modality means the type of child care. So you've usually got a home-based daycare, like a family child care program or group family, which is in a residential property, a house that someone lives in, or you've got a commercial property, daycare, that's usually called a center. These ter The terminology may vary depending on where you're located. In New York, it's called family and group family if you're in a house, or it's called a center or group child care, depending on if you're in New York City, it's called group child care. If you're outside of the city, it's called centers. It's, it's, it's a mess, but you just have, that takes me back to number 30, where you just got to know your regulations and figure out that terminology. So pick a modality. You also have school age childcare programs. In some areas, you might also be able to be not licensed and just registered. So that's a whole different type of world, if I'm not mistaken. So you just got to study those regs, find out what modality suits you, what you can afford as far as your startup process, pick a modality. Number 28 is to stay consistent. And that just goes with whatever you're trying to do in life, to be honest. Things are going to get tough. You're going to hit roadblocks. You're going to get tired. You're going to be exhausted. You're going to be annoyed. It doesn't matter. If you stay consistent, things will get easier. You'll get into that repetition and you'll be able to get through your work, whatever it might be, easier. So just remain consistent and stay focused on your goal. Consistency is also really important when it comes to enforcing your policies and trying to establish procedures within your program. If you're wishy-washy with your with your rules that you're trying to enforce on your staff or on your families, then nobody's going to take you seriously. So stay consistent in your practice and stay consistent in your policies. Number 27 is to find your unique value or what might be considered a niche. It's kind of hard to figure out a niche, in my opinion, when you're providing, you know, standard childcare services. Yes, you could say that you're the best, that you have the, the top quality teachers, that you do eco-friendly, that you it's, it's all play-based or it's Montessori, like all of these things, all of these different terms that you could pick. Um, but it, when it comes to the families, uh, which, many of them might not be educated on the differences of options that they have to them it's it's they're just some of them just are going to call you a daycare and whether you like that term or not it's the truth so with that being said you just have to figure out what is going to be a really important factor for families as to why they would pick your program over somebody else's program, the one next door or down the street or around the corner. What makes you different 
other than your prices. You don't want to price yourself up too high and out of the competition and you don't want to price yourself as the cheapest one just because you think that's what's going to make families pick you and if you do do that and if families do pick you for pricing then maybe there's a good way to deliver it um but anyway pick something that you're good at that you know your team will be good at that you know is a something that the that you know families are gonna find valuable and that there is a need for. Fill that need with whatever you can uniquely offer in your program. Number 26, don't be afraid to try new things. This could also be connected to finding that unique value. If you're currently open and operating and struggling for new business, and you've been open for a while, it's not too late to try to figure out how to differentiate yourself from the other childcare programs in your area. Maybe there is something that you can add on, a service or a procedure, something different that most are not doing that you know that you can do and you can do well. So don't be afraid to try new things as you go on with your childcare business operations. Number 25 is document your process. I wish that I was documenting my process from when I started on day one, nine years ago in, in the home. I wish I had gotten into that routine and that practice back then because now, nine years later, I'm just now getting started on creating a standard operating procedure, or the acronym for that is an SOP. In recent videos, I've talked about how my leadership team and I are in the middle of implementing the entrepreneurial operating system company-wide after I read the book Traction a few months ago. So with that information, we now know that we need to create a standard operating procedure. We need to have it listed how to do exactly what we need to do at all points of the day at, within all roles. Just as a quick example, we know that it's important to take attendance in the mornings with the children, but we need to specifically detail out what the steps of taking attendance is. So specifically having it documented somewhere, attendance, administrator meets the parent outside the door, parent signs on the DSS attendance log while administrator writes on the OCFS weekly attendance sheet, the times, and the times must match exactly. The administrator puts both clipboards down and walks the child to their classroom. And then the teacher signs the child in on tadpoles. That was like six or seven steps that I just listed that were extremely specific and who would know that if they were never specifically told? Instead of just telling with words, it would be best to make sure that your program is able to be run without you there in the event of an emergency or if you just wanna take a break. So having all the step-by-step -step detailed procedures of how to do everything should be documented somewhere and is usually something that's gonna take a couple of months if it's done right. So start now if you haven't started before. Number 24 is to be active in your community. Whatever community your childcare program is in, no matter how big or small your program is, if you're a home daycare, if you're a center-based location, if you're a school-age program, if you have 10 kids or a thousand, please figure out how to be engaged and make a connection with your community because that's really gonna help your word of mouth marketing and your brand recognition. If people consistently see you out at events or at the local PTA meeting or at the back to school fair or at the health center event, they're going to start recognizing your brand and think of you as top of mind whenever they need childcare or they know someone that needs childcare. It gives you a chance to form relationships with a lot of people and it's just a super helpful marketing strategy. Even if you don't need more kids right now, you might be in a position in the future where you wish you had a wait list to call on if multiple children start to disenroll or if it's a transitional time of year and you need to fill a lot of spots quickly, you could do so by making sure that you have a strong wait list because you've got great marketing strategies. Number 23 is establish good relationships. So not only with the people within the community, but with your families and with your staff and with 
with your licensors too. Don't be mean to your licensors or people that have to come in and inspect your program. If you have things that you want to happen, if you gotta make something move and shake and, and it takes somebody's signature and they're gonna remember you as the as the childcare provider that was extremely rude to them or had them wait outside or had them sit in one of those baby chairs because you were being petty, good luck to you. Number 22 is that automations are your friend. What do I mean by automations? I mean the different tools and systems that you can put in place to make sure that your program can run smoothly without you personally spending a lot of time and energy doing things yourself. In my intro, I told you a lot about me and how I started off as a home daycare provider and now I have three center locations. What I did not yet mention is that for the past four years, I actually lived in a completely different state and 100 miles away from my center locations while I had three up and running. I just recently moved back to New York closer to my programs, but from 2019 all the way up until February of 2023, I was a remote childcare business owner of three locations, and I would not have been able to do it without certain automations in place. Luckily for you, I'm actually hosting a free class next week, Thursday, September 28th at 7 p.m. Eastern time. It is called Remote Control. I'm gonna show you the tips and tricks and tools and resources and systems and a lot of things that I had put in place in order to be able to free myself to move to Philadelphia while my childcare business was in New York State. And not only that, when I moved in 2019, I only had one location. So while I was living in Philadelphia, my team team and I were able to grow our one location to three and that was without me having to go in on a routine basis. I probably visited my center once a month or so and that was usually for quick meetings. So if you're interested in figuring out how to put automations in place to free up more of your time, please join my free class on September 28th at 7 p.m. Eastern time. The link will be in the description and I hope that I see you there. Switching things up for tip number 21, you wanna make sure that your business is listed on Google Maps. As soon as you secure your location, even before licensing or even before you're actually open for business, get that business on Google. People are often searching for their services and products that they're in need of on Google, specifically Google Maps. So you want to make sure that you pop up there as an option. It is free and easy to use. Just go to Google, type in Google Business, and the instruction should pop up there for you somewhere. Make sure you're using a separate email, not your personal Gmail account. If you have to create a new Gmail account that's for your business only, go ahead and do that. But get on the Google Business listing ASAP. Once you have your Google business page set up, you can link your website, which is tip number 20. Make sure you have a well-designed website. This does not just mean that it looks nice, but that it's functional. You want to make sure your website can easily capture leads, which means that when people visit your website, they're somewhere where they're entering in their information and it's enticing enough for them to want to enter their information. And I know that creating a website can seem intimidating. It is not easy easy to understand if you did not go to school for graphic design or web development. If you're not an engineer, it could feel like, how am I supposed to possibly do this? But let me be the first to tell you, if you don't know already, there are a lot of free website builder platforms that you can use to create a business website for yourself. Go to websites like Wix or Squarespace or GoDaddy, I think there's a ton of them that have plug and play designs and ready-made templates for you to use to create your website. If that's still too much or maybe you just don't have the time to do it, I personally offer website design services for a limited time. I'm not sure how much longer I will be offering it as my workload for my company gets larger or as that fluctuates, the services and things that I do and provide tend to fluctuate too. So if you're interested, go ahead and go to childcaresites.com slash Wix for a free discovery call and I can let you know if 
I'm able to help you with that. And speaking of websites and making them functional for forms to fill out, the next thing that was really important for me to learn, number 19, is build a contact list. A contact list could include families that have inquired about your program, whether they started or not. They could include employees that have applied to work for you, whether they started working or not. They can include community members that you've met, whether they entered their information on your site or not. If you are collecting a phone number and an email address at any point in time, save it add it to your contact list. With my web design services, I use Wix to build out any website I create. And within Wix, there is CRM technology that allows you to store contacts and manage them and email market to them and send SMS messages. It's really a useful tool to continue fostering relationships that you've established offline when you're online. Thing number 18 that I have learned is to be kind. You never know what people are going through. This goes for your staff and your families. If there are people that are really driving you crazy, if they're not following the rules, if they're making your life difficult, You don't know how difficult their life is. And I'm not saying that to say that your needs and your expectations or your policies that you're trying to enforce are not important. It's just that sometimes before reacting, especially if someone is uh, treating you or, or acting a certain way that is unusual, before immediately jumping to a conclusion or kicking them out of their, your program or firing them or writing them up, maybe take a second to think about if the way that they're behaving is abnormal. And if it is abnormal, you might want to try to figure out what could be going on and try to support them through it. But at the same time, thing number 17 is to create your policies and stick to them. If you are too, too lenient or too, too flexible, it could seem like the policies that you have created do not matter. And it's just piles of paper that are there for no reason, wasting trees. So go ahead and make those policies and stick to them. It might be hard, but do it. However, tip number 16 is that you should make the time and space to review your policies. Those policies need to be reviewed. You cannot just make policies at the start of your program in year one, and now you're on year 10 running on the same exact policies. It usually doesn't work that way. Policies and procedures come into play after certain things happen most of the time. Or you might be realizing that the things that were working for you in year one just cannot work for you in year 10 when you have 50 employees or 100 kids in your building that need certain things. You have to make time to review what you're enforcing. I do this at least once a year. Number 15 is to do the right thing even when it's hard. Things are going to be hard. It's going to be difficult being a childcare business owner. And sometimes you're going to have to make decisions that are difficult to make. And Most of those times you do know a right way to do things and the wrong way to do things. And if you do things the wrong way, you'll find yourself in situations where you're digging a hole for yourself deeper and deeper and it's harder to climb out. So just do things the right way the first time and avoid all that drama. Number 14 is keep an open mind. It is so easy to just be set in your ways, especially if you've been running your business successfully for decades. But as the world turns and as you have new staff coming into your program or new families, or as your business grows, there are going to be things that you could be doing differently that could make a significant impact on your business. But if you just resist change completely, that's not going to go well for you. So just consider keeping an open mind. Thing number 13 is delegate, delegate, delegate. That is every childcare business coach's favorite word, right? Delegate. The reason that it's everybody's favorite word is because it's true. It's hard to grow, even if your goal is not to grow from one center to five or from a family daycare to to a center. 
It doesn't matter what growth looks like for you. It could be within your walls with more enrollment or with better programs or different procedures. It could be your personal professional development growth. It doesn't matter. It's hard to make the time and space needed to grow if you're not delegating responsibilities to other people. Even if you don't have employees, you could use resources like other businesses services to help you run your business or a consultant like me, or you can hire someone for their bookkeeping or accounting services or payroll or things like that. You don't have to do everything alone. Number 12 is that you just want to stay current, stay up to date on new regulations, new marketing strategies, new ideas. Keep going back to that open mind, but really you should seek it out. Don't just wait for someone to present an idea with that open mind of yours, but actually try to discover new things and stay current. Number 11 really strikes a chord with me currently because it's something that I'm really just now coming to a realization of is, but everybody has a different learning style. And I'm not just talking about the kids in your classroom. Children turn into adults and those adults are your staff, your employees, your team. They also have different learning styles. Everybody can't simply read your 100 page employee handbook or everybody can't just listen to you lecture them at a meeting. You need to implement different strategies to make sure that the vast majority of, of those that you're trying to teach something will understand. And this hits home for me, like I said before, because as I mentioned earlier, we're in the middle of implementing the entrepreneurial operating system and we really spent time. I spent time with my leadership team. There are eight of us on this leadership team that had to learn what EOS is, had to study traction and the process and have to implement everything that, that it, it encompasses. And in teaching my leadership team, I noticed that some learn by me just telling them step one, step two, step three, step four, this is the step, this is how you do this, this is how you do this, this is how you do this. Tell them one time they got it. Other people need help in different ways where they need to see it written down. They need to see a slide deck presentation. Someone else might need to see a video. Someone else might need to reread it a few times or read it on their own from someone else instead of me. There are so many ways that you can learn nowadays that someone else might need to have fidget toys. If you look on my desk, I have so many little random gadgets that are just sitting here because I need to have something to touch at all times. I see how they have different strategies of learning, but I really didn't understand that at all in the beginning. So Take that as a lesson and make sure that you really spend time figuring out how to coach your team or how to pass along those policies and those new regs and how, how to make sure your team knows what you need them to know, but you're delivering the messages in a way that they can receive. Tip number 10 is to find support. You are not alone. You can do this and you don't have to do it by yourself. Even if you don't have a business partner or you don't have the support of family helping you, you can build community around you or join a community that is already built. This YouTube channel is a good example of that. I see people commenting and helping each other under my videos all the time. I have a group on Facebook that you can join. It's called Child Care Clubhouse. You can post questions in there and people will often give you feedback on your question or your situation. You can find support that is local to you by going to childcareaware.org to discover who your local CCRNR is, which is your child care resource and referral agency. Sometimes it's the same licensing agency, but maybe it's a different department. But most times in most states, there's a separate organization that's just dedicated to providing free resources for families and child care providers. So look up your local C C R and R. Thing number nine is to remember to love on the people that love you and love on yourself. That is something I easily forget. I'm not even going to lie. It is so hard for me to make space and time in my life nowadays for anything other than my business. And it has really impacted my life. So I don't want you to go through that. So this is just a quick reminder to try to figure out how to make time for things that you love outside of childcare. 
But understand that work-life balance doesn't exist, which is number eight. In my opinion, work-life balance as a business owner doesn't exist in most situations. Yes, you can build your business up to the point where it doesn't need you. As I mentioned, when I talked about how I have a free class talking about gaining remote control, which you can sign up for by clicking the link in the description, even though you can delegate to your heart's desire or you can create automations and make sure that you don't need to personally do everything and you're doing as little as possible, still in your brain, you know that you have the responsibility of many children and families that are counting on you to make sure that your business is up and running to the best extent possible. And sometimes that means that you are the bottom line where if things go wrong, you need to be called on no matter what is going on in your personal life. And if that is the case, sometimes you have to prioritize work over your life. And I just feel like sometimes that is realistic versus saying like, oh, you need to make space for this and for that. No, sometimes you're pouring in 100% to your business for weeks and weeks. And sometimes you're just chilling, doing whatever you want with your life. But just understand that there may be times in your operations that you have to prioritize going into grind mode. I can't tell you how many days I have or nights I have spent up until 3 a.m. because I'm working on a new project or a new strategy or a new system or developing our procedures or updating our policies or brainstorming new ideas or trying to figure out how to solve a problem. Even in, during times where I don't want to be doing that into the middle of the night, sometimes I just can't sleep because it's stressful. Thing number seven is to demonstrate your expectations. Whatever it is that you are informing your team that they need to be doing within their roles and responsibilities, it would be helpful for them to know that you have been there and done that. And I'm not saying every day you have to go into your center or into your program and you be the one to do every job at the start of the day to show them that you can do it. You don't have to do that. But if you let your team know the history of your business and where you started and how you got to where you are today. I'm not saying that it's mandatory or that it can't be successful without you doing that, but it's just it's just easier for your team to know that you are human and you once were in their shoes. After you demonstrate what you expect, you should inspect what you expect, which means that you shouldn't just give them a task and never check up on what they're doing. Make a routine to review the work of your employees. The next thing that I want to share that I learned, number six, is that mistakes will happen. And that's okay. With growth comes mistakes. Sometimes mistakes need to happen for you to know how to do your business better. And there are ways that you can prevent drastic mistakes. There, there You should know the basic bare minimum rules and regulations on safety and all of that. But in terms of like procedures or policies or just operations here and there, you're going to realize that what you have in place sometimes may not be best and you might have a broken system and you might need to revise something or maybe your employee did the wrong thing at the wrong time or whatever. Mistakes are going to happen. I actually made a video early last year on three mistakes to avoid when starting a childcare business. And I'll leave that linked below if you're interested in watching that video after this one. We're getting down to the last few. Number five, learn your finances and create a routine to review them. This is simple, but often overlooked, even with myself at times. It is so important to understand your finances. Find a bookkeeper that is good. Find an accountant that is good. Find a financial advisor, whatever you need to make sure you understand what you should be looking for and that you understand what you are reading once you found it. Just pay attention to your finances. Tip number four is to use your resources. This video is a resource. All videos that you watch on YouTube about your business as you're learning is a resource. Other resources include books, events, activities, conferences, podcasts, 
try to find as many free resources as you can and just listen into other people's experiences so that you can discover new ideas and figure out what works well for other people so that you're not reinventing the wheel. And it also helps for inspiration. If you want to hear about my experiences, I do co-host a podcast with my company's parent coordinator and my best friend, Gigi. It's called Child Care Sights and Sounds. I have a playlist within this YouTube channel. So you can go to my channel, click on the playlist to see all my previous episodes. And you could also just go to your favorite podcast streaming platforms if you prefer audio only and search up Child Care Sights and Sounds. It is linked below as well. We're down to the last three. Number three is to use a calendar. I have said in many a video that using Google Calendar has changed my life. I think I started to use Google Calendar back in 2018 as somewhat of a daily agenda where at the end of the night, I will plan out my day for tomorrow. So before I go to sleep tonight, I already will know what I at least plan to do tomorrow at all hours of the day. It's not just a one, two, three sort of list. It's a from 9 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. I'm going to be in a meeting. From 12 p.m. to 1 p.m. I'm going to be editing a video. It's very detailed. It includes links to resources that I need to use or it has calendar invites with other people. It's just, it's, I use Google Calendar to plan my day. I'll just leave it there. You should also have a calendar on a more broad level that details the events that you're going to be having within your program throughout the year. Try to plan for the whole year if you can, if not at least quarterly. What are those performances or special events or activities where you want families to come into your program? Try to have those already planned out as far in advance as possible and put it up on your calendar. You could put a calendar on your website if you had one so that your families and staff could easily access it and they don't have to be invited through Google Calendar and you don't have to expose what you got going on on a daily basis to them because you gave them access to your business calendar. Put one on your website that just displays your events and your closings and your special programs and things like that. The next thing that I have learned that is really important in your childcare business operations, number two, is to invest in your staff. And I'm not just talking about their salaries. I don't mean that you should be paying them high amounts of money that you know you can't afford and your business would go broke. Like, no, I'm saying that you should be investing your time and energy, if not, or and also some money into their professional development. It's okay to acknowledge that your business might just be a stepping stone for them in their career and they might move on to maybe the public school system or a different industry altogether. It's just important to know what your staff want to do as long-term goals and try to figure out how, if at all, you can support them in their development. They will appreciate it. They will probably stick around with you longer because they know that you they have your support. And you could also discover if they are the right fit to make a career out of being in your program. So figure out ways to invest in your staff, which will help them feel more appreciated and to stick around longer. Now, last but not least, and technically first, is number one, do it scared. I know that I'm not the first to say that, but if I am the first that you've heard that phrase from, you're probably wondering, what do you mean, do what scared? Whatever it is, if you have been stuck, if you've been feeling stuck with starting your program or expanding your program or making any sort of change in your program that you probably know is best, but you're just nervous, you're scared about what could happen or what could go wrong, stop, be, stop, just stop, just do it. Literally, like Nike said, just do it. If you know that you are educated, you're qualified, you did the research, you will keep those kids safe, you know everything you're supposed to know, and the only issue is that you're scared, just do it. 
Okay. You can book me for a consultation. If you want to run through the things that are worrying you, you could go to childcaresites.com slash Danny Christine, and we can talk about different strategies for getting you to that next step if you would like. But I really don't want you to be holding yourself back for much longer from getting to that next level. Anyway, if you have reached this point of the video, I appreciate you. Thank you for sticking around for the 30 things that I have learned and felt compelled to share with you. If you're a veteran in this childcare industry and you know that I've missed some crucial things on this list, please comment below. Let me know what I missed. If you want to keep up with me in between the times that I'm posting on this channel, you can follow me on Instagram at Danny Christine Consulting. Once again, please be sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel if you're not already subscribed. And be sure to click the link in the description below to join my free class happening next week, Thursday, September 28th at 7 p.m. Eastern time. I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.